Well, two points in their last two games. It's almost like they won one. Hello, darkness, my old friend. You've come to talk with me again. Sens lose 2-1 to one in overtime to the Montreal Canadiens. How are the young guys now? I finally did it! I scored again! Quit taking penalties! The Sens are gonna blow this game! Way to tie up the stick in front! Not! Well done! Just well done! You better believe we're gonna be having a penalty chat at the end of this one. What a time to be alive! What a long and brutal season that was. This team, man! And to be honest, Ottawa probably deserved a better fate. They played pretty well in the last part of the second, and quite well in the third, but just couldn't beat Carey Price who stole one for the Habs. As always though, let's kick things off with lineup changes. And in a shocking move, with the Sens on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, the lineup stayed exactly the same, including in goal where Marcus Hogberg started for the second night in a row. He was excellent in Detroit, so it's not like it's a huge surprise to see him play again, but it is the second night of a back-to-back. -back. That doesn't happen too often. I'm sure Andy would have loved to have played, but Hogberg was excellent last night, so you can't blame DJ Smith for the decision. Unfortunately for the Sens, the first period doesn't go all that well for the team or for Hogberg as they're outplayed by the Habs just slightly and give up the period's only goal. Just under eight and a half minutes into the first period, the Habs have the power play, Nick Suzuki gets the puck at the point, he absolutely snipes one over the blocker of Marcus Hogberg to give the Habs a 1-0 lead. And credit where credit's due on this goal. What a terrific shot by Suzuki. It was perfectly placed. There wasn't a ton Hogberg was going to do. Now the Sens are in a hole. And those are the kinds of goals I can live with. Thankfully, it doesn't get any worse. And we head to the second period with the Habs still in front just one nothing. Then in the second period, both teams have some chances, but both goalies are terrific as they make a number of excellent saves, including a Carey Price breakaway save on Chris Tierney while shorthanded to keep the game 1-0, heading to the third period. Then with just under six and a half minutes left in the third period, Anthony Duclair wheels the puck into the Canadian zone, he kind of loses it, Drake Batherson tries to pick it up, he can't really get it, the puck just keeps rolling, rolling, Carey Price overslides, the puck just rolling, rolling, right over the goal line, in the net, and just like that, we're tied at one. Here we are more than 12 hours later, and I'm still not exactly sure how this puck goes in. I think Matthew Pekka tried to get the puck and accidentally whacked it in his own net, but it's still kind of hard to tell. Regardless of what actually happened, the Sens get a lucky break, Drake Batherson gets his first goal of the season, and we're tied at one with 6.28 left in the third period. And let's be honest, with the way the Sens played, particularly in that third period, they probably deserve that lucky bounce anyway. And that's how the third period would end. As for the third time in three games this season, the Sens and Habs are heading to overtime. I guess you could say that's about as evenly matched as two teams could be. But there was still an extra point up for grabs, and the Habs took it. After Marcus Hogberg turns aside an Ilya Kovalchuk breakaway early in the overtime period, Kovalchuk would get another chance in the final minute, and this time, he'd make the Sens pay. Kovalchuk races in with Philip Deneau 2 on 1 with Drake Batherson back as the defender. Batherson does an excellent job to take away the pass, but Kovalchuk beats Hogberg with a terrifically placed shot, and the Habs win 2 1 in overtime. So the Sens lost this game because of two perfectly placed shots. It's hard to get upset about that. And like I said, I really like the job that Drake Batherson did on the back check there. He took away the pass and left the shooter to the goalie. In my opinion, that's a textbook defensive play on a 2 on 1 by a forward no less, and that's just really impressive. Unfortunately though, it didn't result in a win. Let's just get into good news, bad news. I thought Ottawa's effort on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, with travel, although not far, was very good, and that is the good news. The Sens weren't great in the first period by any stretch, and I thought the Habs started to take over the game in overtime, but particularly the late second period and all of the third period, Ottawa absolutely dominated the Habs and probably should have won the game before it even got to overtime. The Sens outshot the Habs 32-9 in the second and third periods of this game. They absolutely peppered Carey Price, but just couldn't find a goal. 
Considering this came on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, the Sens looked pretty impressive last night, and that is the good news. Now, for the bad news. The Sens just can't find a way to win a hockey game right now, and that is the bad news. The Sens have currently lost seven games in a row, and in their last five games, two of them they've lost in overtime, and three of them they've had a lead at the end of at least the first period. And in the Tampa game, they had a lead at the end of the second period. Against Florida, they came unglued in the second. Against Tampa, they came unglued in the third. Against Washington, they came unglued in the second. Against Detroit, they couldn't seal the deal in overtime. And against Montreal, they couldn't seal the deal in overtime either. The Sens have got to figure out a way to clean that up. I know they're trying to lose for Lafreniere, but they've got to get some wins. There's a lot of young talent on this roster, and they've got to learn how to win at some point. That some point isn't right now, because the Sens for the life of them can't figure out how to win a game, and that is the bad news. Next up, the Sens return to action Tuesday evening, when they host the Chicago Blackhawks. That contest will be the first of two meetings on the season between the two teams, with the Sens returning to Chicago on March 13th. And coming into this contest, it's the Blackhawks who should have the momentum, as they've won five straight against the Sens, outscoring them 25-15 to in those games. That's an average of 5-3 per game, including a wild 8-7 to Blackhawks win last year. The Sens haven't beat the Blackhawks in over three years, and Chicago is currently trying to close the gap between themselves and a playoff spot, so the Sens better be ready for this one. And if they're not, Kane and Debrinkat are going to run them out of the building. That's it for this video. Hit like if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share it with anybody you know, and today's question is, what did you think of the Sens' effort last night? Do you think they deserved a better result? Let me know what you thought down below, and we'll see you Tuesday night when the Sens host the Chicago Blackhawks.